Amos Tversky and Daniel Kahneman, I believe, are the last psychologists to win a Nobel Prize. Um, one of them was at Stanford. The other was at, I don't know, MIT or something crazy like that. Anyway, they, they described something called the availability heuristic. And this is that you basically um, use information that you can recall easily to make decisions because it's available. You don't take into account base rates. You don't take into account statistical analysis before you make your decision because of the information available. This goes hand in hand a little bit with confirmation bias, but we tend to ignore important information uh, when we deem it, um, we deem it non-essential when we don't know about it. Um, and also maybe when we, we make stereotypical judgments. All right, so here you go. Um, they, there is a, a man and his son. They are, they're flying uh, up into a, a remote place to go uh, hunting and their plane crashes in the woods and a, a valiant rescue effort is made and they get the, the dad's dead, but the son's alive and they get him to the hospital and uh, the emergency room uh, surgeon is sitting there and says, I can't operate on this boy. He's my son. How is that possible? This is like a derivation of a riddle I once heard. You think, well, how is that possible? Because the, the, the kid's dad just died in the crash. And the reality is, is that when you think of surgeon, you make a sexist judgment. Surgeon was a woman. That was her son. She can't operate on him because it's her son. This is a, a classic instance of how we ignore information that we know to be true, that it's possible to be a son or a, a, a mother or a father of a son. But because you have a stereotyping brain, when I'm feeding you a whole bunch of new information about this son and a crash and hunting and planes and surgeons and rescue efforts, your brain is going to take stereotypical judgments and it's going to apply them. Now, once I've said it was a female surgeon, you go, oh, okay. You don't go, nope, women can't be surgeons. You don't say that, even though less females are surgeons than men. Uh, you don't think that immediately. You've stereotyped. Does that mean that you're a sexist, a, a rabid, horrible, sexist person that doesn't love women and don't think they can achieve in the medical field? No. It means you've taken reality of base rates and applied it quickly in a scenario where you were trying to follow a story. You can see where confusion comes from sometimes. Um, this happens a lot. So be patient. You don't have to understand something quickly. And when you hear new information, you can incorporate that into your mind to help you sort of get through uh, or overcome that functional fixedness or that stereotype. You should be stereotyping things, but you should be constantly learning about the stereotypes you have and how they are violated by your experiences with real people and real behaviors. One of the questions that is introduced to talk about Amos and Tversky's um, contribution to psychological thinking is this one. So do you think more college students use Macs or PCs? Now, almost everybody is going to say, Oh, they use, they use Apple products. But the reality is if you look at the numbers sold, PCs have far more of the market share than Macs do. Yet we think because of phones and the available availability heuristic, we think of all these Apple iPhones around. We think when you're talking about a MacBook or an HP Inspiron or a Dell or a, what is the, what's the other Acer, um, Lenovo, all these sort of other ones that are available, far more people buy those computers than do buy Apple products. And yet you probably misinterpreted it and that's the availability heuristic that screws up your thinking. Imagine this in a political context. Imagine how you might be wrong about your own thoughts there, whether they be conservative or liberal you're probably wrong about a lot of things. If you don't utilize thinking, if you don't constantly become skeptical of your own thoughts, then you're going to get stuck 
in a functionally fixed situation where you don't use the correct information, the base rates available to help you think about what should be, you'll be disappointed. You'll be surprised more often than you should be, and you'll be wrong about more. So utilize thinking. Don't be scared about yourself being wrong. Just constantly be in a state of learning, right? Have a learner's mind where you're constantly saying, I'm probably wrong about this. Let's think about it. Let's go through that process of developing myself as a thinker, as somebody who has complex thoughts, not simple ones that have been handed to me on a plate of ideology from either the conservative right or the liberal left. Think deeply about stuff. It's a worthwhile pursuit. Okay. The last thing that happens in, in this chapter that I'm going to talk about with the thinking and cognition is something called confirmation bias. Now, this is one of the easiest times in my teaching career to teach you about confirmation bias because we have a country divided. We have a country that's divided over things like police brutality, Black Lives Matter, uh, COVID, and whether you wear a mask or not. It's so easy for me to teach this right now. It's wonderful. Okay. Confirmation bias basically says this. You know those people online who share posts or put up, you know, write about something from one perspective? What they've done is they've gone and they've researched. Uh, that's what they call research. They've gone and researched things where they looked online and they type, typed into a Google search. They typed in... Uh, Wearing masks doesn't help COVID. I don't know, that's, they think that you shouldn't wear masks out in public because they don't do anything. Or even worse, they've, they've got this thing where they think it, it, it somehow makes you not able to breathe. They don't take into account the fact that, well, surgeons wear them for eight hours at a time and they're some of the smartest people we have and they're okay, seemingly smartest, most high-functioning people we have wear masks all the time. Uh, I like the the Princess Bride quote that Carrie Ewells has. Is someone asks him, why do you wear a mask? And he says, they're terribly comfortable. I think in the future, everyone will be wearing them. Um, but in that sense, that person hasn't really researched anything. What they've done is they've gone online to find other people who share their belief system and will make statements, logical or not, factual or not, but those statements they'll use as a way to confirm the bias that they have already made up their mind about masks. I'm guessing many of you have thoughts about masks and you go, yes, we should wear masks everywhere we go. There's no consequence to wearing masks. If you think that way, you really haven't thought about it you have a confirmation bias as well. And so you probably go into other venues to research and you just confirm your own bias. Instead, to truly think about this, you should think perhaps masks are the correct thing to do, perhaps they're the incorrect thing to do, or perhaps they make no difference whatsoever. If you have that as your mindset, you're able to consider things. You're able to think through a scenario where you're not just being fed uh, a, a buffet from one place, right? It's not, um, it's not fresh choice or soup plantation. I don't know. Those are the only buffets that I know of. Um, oh, but I heard soup plantations just shut down. Another victim of COVID. Um, or maybe poor management. But anyway, we're back to masks. They work. They don't work. Or they're bad for you. They're worse for you. These are all possibilities. If anybody tells you that they know... They're wrong and lying to you. However, what you should do with your own behavior is probably wear a mask right now because no one knows. Because it's an unsure thing, we know masks are generally safe, so we can almost knock off that, that, that they're dangerous for you. I, I saw a video of people passing out free masks yesterday, and an old woman says to them, you know that you're breathing your own carbon dioxide, right? I'm guessing she's not a pulmonary specialist. <laughs> and again, we have many workers in our country who wear masks on the reg and they're totally fine from a health standpoint. So just think about that. One thing we can knock off that they're not good. 
Maybe they don't work to stop the spread. Maybe they don't. We don't know if they do or don't. We haven't really figured it out quite yet. We think it's true. It's a theory. It's an unproven theory. If you go back to what we talked about uh, in terms of science, it, it's a theory that we need to test experimentally, and then we can confirm whether or not it's a fact that they, what we think they do, that they help stop the spread of this virus. Now, if you think about that, we don't know that that's true because we know people that wear masks all the time and wear them properly still get the virus. And so we're a little unsure about how they could get the virus when they've done properly their PPE and they're, they're doing the correct things in terms of, you know, sterile, keeping sterile, hand washing and, and antibacterials or viral stuff. But these two options that seem reasonable, maybe it doesn't work, maybe it does work, which one should you use? If it's anything like me, you think, well, sh should I tell other people that I care about them? Even if I don't think it works, even if I'm here, I don't think it works. If I wear a mask, I'm telling other people that I'm thinking about their safety. If I wear a mask because I think it works, that's not even as laudable of a task because you're basically just, you're scared of getting it or you're scared of giving it to somebody and you're really, you're using a mask be for self-preservation. But if you're somebody who's here, I think you should wear a mask because it's the most benevolent thing you could do when you go, you know, I don't think it works, but I'd like to show other people I care about them. 